One of the best diagnostic methods that was ever developed was an AMAS test. AMAS, yes. And that was approved by the FDA in 1978. And the caveat with the AMAS test is, it will tell you if you have cancer, but it won't tell you where the cancer is. But the reason it's so accurate is most of the tests we have for cancer, if you're not doing a CT scan with contrast, et cetera, mm -hmm. or a biopsy, is, are called cancer antigen tests, CA19A, uh, as an example, CA19. It's cancer antigen 19. Mm. The problem with these tests is so many factors can affect their outcome. Mm. If you have an inflammatory process going on, right. if you have an infection going on, you can right. show positive in these. The AMAS test, what it stands for is anti-malignant antibody screening. And it's actually testing for antibodies to malignant, which are given off malignancy, came from that term, malignant, uh, because all cancer cells give off malignant. Mm. Your body produces antibodies to malignant. Antibody measurements are much, much, much more specific and accurate than antigen tests. So you think everyone in the world would be going, it's a simple blood test. Right. Nope. No biopsy. You don't have to worry about opening a tumor wall and seeding the rest of the body with cancer cells. You don't have to worry about any of the problems involved or any of the mistakes involved in cancer antigen tests. Never used. Mm -mm. You can ask oncologist after oncologist after oncologist after oncologist, do you do an AMAS test? And they'll say, what's that? They've, yeah, they've never heard of it. They've never even heard of yeah. it. The reason that it went into this favor was for the body to be able to produce antibodies, it had to be able to have an intact immune system. Mm. As soon as chemotherapy was started, they could no longer follow it. Immune system shot. The immune system is no longer capable of right. producing these antibodies, so the test is useless. So they won't. They will. They will never use the test because they'll never stop using chemo. That's true. Too much money. There's far too much. Money. Speaking of the antigen, though, that that reminds me of, of a, a topic that we've discussed before. Talk a little bit about the uh, the PSA test for prostate cancer. In the fact that it's not even necessarily, that stands for prostate specific antigen. Right. And it's not even necessarily <laughs> prostate specific because women can have high PSAs and they don't have a prostate. Anytime you see an A after a test that stands for antigens, be very skeptical because PSA dis, does stand for prostate specific antigen. However, in many t different types of cancer and breast cancers, for example, in women that have mm -hmm. no prostate, right. will have elevated PSAs which means it's not a prostate-specific prostate <laughs> antigen. It's yeah. kind of like the Federal Reserve, right? It's neither federal nor are there any reserves. Right. <laughs> it's a big, that's a good analogy. It's neither federal nor are there reserves. Yeah. It's neither prostate-specific, uh, and it's not reliable at all. Right. It's no measurement of anything. It's a measurement of inflammation, isn't it? it the doctor that developed it, and I had dinner one night many, many year, years ago, and he was actually remorseful that he had developed that test because he was aware that as cells became compressed, they would, it would increase the prostate-specific antigen. And a lot of things can cause this compression of these cells. And a, a bacterial infection can raise your PSA of the prostate I'm mm -hmm. talking about now. Um, a uh, fungal infection can often raise your Certain over-the-counter medicines. Some over-the-counter med medicines, some prescription medicines can. Another thing that most people don't realize, uh, I t I've touched on it briefly before, and that's how estrogenic males are becoming. Mm -hmm. And the more estrogen that's in the prostate, the higher the PSA will be. Mm. So using prostate-specific antigen as a test for either the progression of prostate cancer or diagnosis of prostate cancer is totally BS. Yeah, and that and that comes from the mouth of the man who developed the test, basically. I mean, he did yes. not so many words. And he's written. Yeah, I, I, I quote him in, in the book about 
the, the PSA test and how he believes that it's kind of a bogus test now. It doesn't. It just measures inflammation, but it should not be used to diagnose prostate cancer. No, and on the other hand, the AMAS test I dis discussed with you has over a 98.7% accuracy test with breast cancer, for example. But it's not being used. You won't be able to get it. Well, they don't, they don't want to stop you from getting that mammogram. No. Mammogram is far too lucrative of a business. And every country now that started using mammograms heavily, with the exception of the United States, of course, we're the only one of the few countries that use GMO foods as well, mm -hmm. um, they do honest studies. Many countries outside of the United States, medicine is not so much a business as truly a healing art. And they, they look at these facts. Unfortunately, the large pharmaceutical companies are now influencing more and more and more of these countries mm. and sliding them. But mammography was shown to actually increase the rate right. of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're having a mammogram every year. That's a, well, it's cumulative radiation. Yeah, most people don't realize that radiation is cumulative, just like fluoride is cumulative. Right. It's a neurotoxin, and it's cumulative. In other words, you t it, the longer you take it, even if it's a small dose, it will accumulate in your system mm -hmm. to the point where it will cause harm. Right. 